Hello and welcome to the garden. Well today it's, I think it's exactly two weeks since I potted up our winter squash because we had a little bit of a cold spell and I didn't want to plant them out. They were in fairly small pots at the time. I moved them on, I skipped a few pot sizes, but they have gone completely nuts in the last two weeks. I'll show you those plants later. Great big long stems, especially on the Marina di Chioggia. And that's a really vigorous squash, but I'm gonna get those in the ground today. My first job though, is just to tie up a couple of these summer squash. So in the bathtub behind me, I've got some yellow crookneck. That's a bushy sort of plant, like a ordinary courgette. It looks like it's gonna be pretty prolific this season. It's doing very well. Behind them though, I've got the tromba dalbenga, and that's a climbing sort or, or a trailing sort if you let it go on the ground. I want it to go up some wires here and it's long overdue being tied in. So I'm gonna do that first. Let me show you the plants. So this is one of the crookneck squash and you can see there's lots of fruit on here already. It's doing very nicely. That fruit is not good. I think that probably didn't set properly. Um, that one behind is probably ready. I've got a few on these plants that are more or less there and I'll probably want to pick these while they're still pretty small. But you can see how many fruit I've got on here. Three, four, five. Five that have set. I've got a, a sixth one just about to flower. And I think that male flower has just gone over and there's lots more fruit coming. I can see at least, at least four more and, and probably tucked away in there. Yeah, five. Yeah, this is really good. Now, there are a couple of dodgy old leaves on here and I know from another video that somebody was a little concerned about their courgette leaves yellowing and it's really a very common thing for these old leaves to, to do that. These are, are some of the first true leaves that it put out and you can see that the new growth is coming through lush and dark green. So there's, there's not actually a problem with the plant. No need to uh, dive on the fertilizer yet because there's, there's no nutritional problem. I mean, if, if you saw this on these young leaves that were coming out, you've definitely got some kind of problem with your plant, but these leaves are healthy and lovely. So I know that this is just an old leaf. So I'm just gonna nip in there with the knife and get rid of it. Uh, and the same with that one. Maybe I can pinch that one out. Without damaging the plant too much. There we go. This one, I think, that one can follow pretty soon. And I've got a few on these old ones that, that can go. I mean, when they start to yellow, they're, they're not contributing anything really to the plant. So it's these, it's these leaves here that are doing all the work at the moment. So it's no problem getting rid of those. And eventually they'll start to decay anyway. So it's a good idea to keep them nice and tidy. But these plants, I've got three of them in the tub here. They're doing really well. Well, I've been a bit of a chump here with this plant because it's gone and disappeared behind two of these wires. And I did wonder about just leaving it behind there, but I think actually I'm gonna try and get that out. You probably can't see on the camera. I'll, I'll bring that in closer in a minute and, and show you the fruit that are showing up there. But I wanna be really careful with this. I mean, if it breaks the stem, it's not the end of the world. The side shoots will quickly replace it, but if I can get this out very gently, that would be great. Oh, there we go. There we go. Whew. Right, bad gardening. Should have tied this in a long time ago. Right. If I put one right there, Oh, this is this has grown so much just in the last couple of weeks. I 
and although we had that period of cooler weather, it, summer squash don't seem to have minded too much. They'd been out here for a little while, so they were maybe well acclimatized to it. I put these on quite loose because these stems can get pretty chunky. So what have we got here? Uh, well, there's a new shoot coming up in at least two places. And I will let several of these side shoots come up on these plants. And maybe when this one reaches the top of the wires, I will cut it back and let the others come up and fruit. I've got male flowers here. Let me give you a quick look at the flowers. So that's a male flower here. You can see the flower and, and just a stem behind it. No sign of a little fruit look there. But here's one of the females and you can see that really funky looking squash behind there. And, and this one, this one we're going to use primarily as a summer squash, although it can keep into the winter. And then it looks a little bit like a, a, a crooked butternut. So all the seeds will be up in this swollen end. And then this curved part here is just solid flesh. It's a really, it's a really funny looking fella, but it's very tasty, especially for a summer squash. I think this is maybe slightly less watery and perhaps slightly better flavored than a regular courgette, but with a bit of luck, that will set and that will be one of our first fruit. Oh, what have I got here? Oh, this isn't quite so tall and it hasn't grown behind the, the wires. So this is a bit easier. They do have lots of tendrils that will in due course get a grip. You can see that one is all spiraling around. It will soon grab hold. I think that needs one more tie just to keep it upright. Right, what have I got here? Uh, this one's a bit longer. That's interesting, the outside ones are longer than the one in the middle. I don't know if there's any reason for that, but let's gently lift that up. Right. I'm really happy with these pla oh I'm not happy with that, that's gross. Thank you, seagulls. Um I'm really happy with these plants. These leaves are lovely, nice dark green, and I added I think a whole bag of horse compost here and some fish blood and bone, so there's plenty of feed in this tub and we've been watering it from time to time when it hasn't been rained on. The wall does create a bit of a shadow here, but if the if the weather's coming from the west, as it often does, then this will very often get rained on, which is handy. But yeah, there's such healthy, vibrant looking leaves at the moment. Long may that continue. So on with the main business of the day, and I'm gonna squeeze in some winter squash here in the borders, and as usual, the soil in the borders, it's not brilliant. Parts of it had a good mulch earlier in the year and other parts haven't. So I'm gonna improve the soil a little bit locally, just where I'm planting. It's no point covering the whole lot again, I don't think. Although the squash can root from nodes all along the, the stem, I'm not that bothered about that. I, I just want to improve the soil a little bit, put some horse compost and some fish blood and bone in where I'm planting. So that's the job. There's some weed growth on these borders. They're always pretty weedy and I will just hoe that off. At some point, the big old squash leaves are gonna shade most of this border anyway. It's not a huge amount of room here for these plants. Some of them, especially the Chioggia squash, it's pretty vigorous. So they're gonna get, they're gonna get out of hand. That's, <laughs> that's almost guaranteed, but they can run wherever they like. I don't care really. Um, 
they can escape onto the paths they usually do. Anyway, let me show you this Chioggia squash because it was a nice looking plant two weeks ago and it has really grown. That is now a sensible sized pot for it, but I'm certain that it's filled that pot. There are roots coming out the bottom. That's just in two weeks. So yeah, it certainly made the most of the richer compost that it went into. So that's the first of them. And I've, I've got it laid down because the, the stems do flop over and, and I don't want to stand it up and put a lot of strain on the stem there because I have lost at least one squash recently by, by doing that. Not this season, I, I did that last year and, and I lost one of the, the plants with a broken stem. So I will probably plant that in at a little bit of an angle. I'll probably make a little bit of a mound as well like I usually do. Although this soil is pretty free draining. So first job though, is to clear a little patch of weed and, and then uh, get the fork in there, loosen up the soil and get a bit of horse compost and fish blood and bone in there. So most of that is annual weed, so I'm, I'm not going to fuss over that. Ah, this isn't too bad here. Sometimes this soil is so compact you, you can hardly get a fork in it, but this was all the big weed was taken out recently. So, and some old brassicas, so the soil's not so hard here. And this is the sort of work I try to avoid. Really, it's not so good for me, the dodgy ticker. So I'm just going to do a little bit around the planting hole. Yeah, it doesn't take long before I'm short of breath, but never mind carry on be quite generous with that that in with the soil properly and now some fish blood and bone as well again reasonably generous because these are quite quite greedy plants I'm just going to bring that up into a bit of a mound. I'm not going to press it down too much. It'll compact in its own time. That will do. I'm going to make a bit of a hole for that tub. Right, now I've got to do this with a bit of care. Oh, wow, two weeks and it's it's quite pot bound really. Let's have a little go at teasing some of this root out. Oh, it's, it's okay. It's it's coming, it's coming loose. That's fine. I don't like to leave it circling. The plants don't then get their roots out properly. So it's always worth taking a moment to tease them out gently, not getting in there smushing it up. I'm going to lose a few bits of root, but I don't really want to cause much damage there. And then I'm going to set that 
so there's no no pressure on that stem there so keep that up and then fill around the back I can frame that in and just make a nice mound of it uh, because I've loosened that soil underneath those roots are going to very quickly get down into that this will be lovely but there's no there's no weight here that the stem is just lying on the ground here and that's really important otherwise otherwise there's every chance that this stem would actually snap and that's what happened last time and I may well get roots form at these nodes here which would be ideal now until this plant has got its roots down properly it will need uh, a little bit of water from time to time it's it's up in the air this mound is going to drain pretty quickly now that organic matter that I've added, that's going to retain a bit of moisture, but even so, I think during dry spells, this will need a little bit of water. But importantly, during really wet weather, this mound is not going to remain very wet it's going to drain quite nicely from that point so i'm just going to lay this stem in the direction i want it to travel and i'll try and keep this under some sort of control though inevitably i will neglect them for a couple of weeks and they'll go mad so with those stems you can you can just circle them round in a sort of track and keep them reasonably well under control you can put some stakes in i very often got some where are they have i got any here no yeah these little bits of u-shaped wire and these are great for netting pinning down soaker hoses that's the original reason i bought these but they're also great for pinning down the squash. Now you can just run them around a bit of bamboo cane or some stakes, a cane either side of the stem keeps it in the right sort of place. These are excellent as well. Um, not, not too hard, but that will let you pin down at the nodes and, and hopefully then you get some extra roots go down. And anyway, I can use some of these to put these squash vines in the path that I'd like them to grow. Whether I actually do that or not, who knows? Probably the next time you see these, they'll be in a complete shambles, but never mind. Anyway, I've got some more to get in and I will do those. I'll come back after I've planted it. Don't need to see me huffing and puffing through another half a dozen plants. So back in a minute. So this is a part of the plot that hasn't appeared on any previous videos. I'm outside the kitchen garden and this is what we refer to as our dirty compost heap. Actually, this was an overgrown mess and it was uncovered and we found this block work structure here. I'm not entirely sure what it was originally, but we've turned it into the dirty compost heap. So here we put perennial weeds, anything with nasty roots, very seedy stuff. So this is the poached eggplant that it was flowering profusely, but it's gone over now. And before these seeds ripen, we've just put it here. I don't care if weeds grow here. This is a compost that I don't want to spread in the kitchen garden because all, in all likelihood, it's just going to spread weed seeds everywhere. I'm pretty sure our compost heaps don't get quite hot enough to deal with the weed seeds so but anyway underneath this fresh layer there's a big heap of old compost and i don't want to waste it so i'm going to put some squash there so i've sunk these pots down through this green layer and they're now sat on top of the compost beneath 
the pots have big holes in, so I've cut out almost the entirety of the bottom, and these plants will then root down through these pots into the compost heap, and they can grow out over the side. I've got some old bits of woodwork here that I'll prop up and they can flow on out of the compost bin and hopefully give us some extra fruit. And this is where we're putting most of our spare plants. So in the barrow here, I've got a mixture of multi-purpose compost, some horse compost, and then some fish blood and bone. So something to give them a good start. And for everything else, they need to get their roots down below. So I'll just get the height right. Actually, that's pretty good. They kind of have to fend for themselves a bit out here. They don't get watered very often and they're just left to their own devices. The deer will come and chew these from time to time. So it's a little bit of a risk whether we get anything, but we did get crop off of these last year and hopefully we will do again this year. So I'll just fill that around with the new compost. And there we go. So I've got five of these and I've got five spare plants here that I can use. That still leaves me a couple of smaller ones just in case I have a problem with any of those I've set out in the main garden. But these I'm not too worried about. We get what we get from these, but it's nice to have a place to put them. And it's nice to make use of this otherwise pretty nasty compost. Right, so that job is done. I've got two of the Kyogia squash here and just like the one I put in the kitchen garden itself, that was pretty packed into the pot. But the other two, the sweet dumpling and the butternut, they were quite reasonable, definitely not pot bound. Uh, some of those could have stayed in their pots for another week or so and they'd have been fine, but it was just these Kyogia ones. It is such a vigorous squash, that one. I mean, you can see by the plants, they're about three or four times the size of the others. So yeah, that one, that one was a little bit pot bound and that's, that's pretty good going because they only, they only went into those larger pots two weeks ago and they really packed them out. But anyway, this part is done. I will show you what we did in the kitchen garden. So in this corner, this is where we had leaks last season and this is part of the border that we covered to save me a bit of work and all we've done here is peel back the corners and we've got three plants in here so in the corner nearest to us we've got one of the Kyogia squash and that can trail along the the border here and generally go nuts because we're not going to be using these borders for anything else then on the left hand side nearest the uh, plum tree we've got I think that's a sweet dumpling. And then over by the fence near that blank piece of trellis, we've got a butternut. And if it's so inclined and, and uh, behaves itself, I can tie in some of that growth to that trellis and it can climb up there. And I dare say we'll get a side shoot running along the ground as well. In the next section uh, near the celeriac, I've got, I think that one is a sweet dumpling. And then over the other side, I've got a butternut squash. And in the end here, well, there's the Kyogia squash in the background that you saw me plant. And the one in front is another one of the sweet dumplings. So the sweet dumpling should be a rather smaller plant. So the Kyogia squash should have just about enough room to run around. The dumplings and the butternut, they can go up trellis okay. I wouldn't put the Kyogia squash up a trellis. That produces pretty heavy fruit, so that is not suitable for that. But um, I don't know. There's, there are one or two spots between the trees where a side shoot could be trained up a trellis, and maybe I'll do that if they throw one out in the right direction. 
So as I mentioned in a previous video, we are cutting back a little bit on what we're sowing and growing this year. And in fact, this is the last thing I can plant out. I have no other seedlings. So I do need to do a little bit of sowing. Later in the year, I will certainly want to do some more beetroot. I need more lettuce, that is the most urgent. And I've left a gap along the membrane in the north border and I can pop the lettuce right in there up against the fence. It's a shady spot. And during the summer, a shady spot is what you want for the lettuce. They really don't like the heat. But anyway, I'm all caught up with planting out now. And if I don't do another thing in the garden, I'm sure I'm gonna be pretty happy with what we're producing this year. But anyway, that is all for this video. Thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now. Thank you.